Hello team, welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video and myself, Jonathan MSP. It's a Ukraine War Update Extra video, giving you the extra context around the missile that struck the children's hospital only the other day and the narratives provided by Russia, the counter-narratives. We need to get uh, a, a handle on what actually happened uh, with some degree of accuracy. And because Russia has a, does a very good job of flooding the information space with all this um, disinformation, we we often struggle to be able to know where we are, know what's happening. And then people who aren't as ensconced in this war as you and I will, uh, or as you and me, will find it find themselves much more vulnerable to that Russian disinformation. Right? They don't have the tools or the time to be able to uh, differentiate myth from fact so just want to put this one to bed so to remind ourselves what happened a hospital was hit uh, there's so much imagery coming out of uh, horrific stuff i mean we're hearing today that uh, one of the hospital wings destroyed was an nicu that's a neonatal icu for premature babies you know babies just targeted it appears by the Russians. So, okay, what do we have? We have one of the main sources of evidence is a video of the missile coming down. I'll get into trouble if I show that too closely, but here is the still from the video. And basically, that's the end, right? It's a Russian missile. That is a Russian missile. But we're going to we're going to look at it into some more details going on here, right? What happened is that the uh, Russians are head of the UN Security Council, right? The Ukrainians called an emergency meeting, and of course that allowed the Russians to put in their tuppence. I think they've even stopped Czechia saying some stuff, and I don't know. Anyway, uh, we have the Russian Federation. Uh, Vasily Nebenja uh, saying, well, no report says Russian idiot and permanent Russian representative to the UN uh, said that Norwegian supplied Nazam's air defense missile and was responsible for the tragedy at the Okhmatit uh, disaster in Kiev, leading to dozens killed and over 100 wounded, including children. Um, and so these, most of the Russians' claims will revolve around this. I mean, some call it uh, an outright false flag. Some say it was air defense. Some, but not all of these claims are coherent, mutually coherent. So that there is a bit of mutual exclusivity to some of their claims. Throw everything at the wall, see what sticks. Type approach. Now in the UN, uh, there was this quote uh, from Volodymyr Zhovny, the director of the hospital. So he came on, and I think that's really powerful for him to do so. This is not just a war crime. This is beyond the bounds of humanity. Uh, at the time of the attack, more than 600 patients and almost as many employees were in the hospital. Three complex operations were being performed. The children were on drips, on dialysis, in intensive care. What happened put their lives at risk. Uh, and then, of course, the answer to that, from Russia was just to come out with disinformation and that's what we're going to look at. Just to give you a reminder that Talaria, I interviewed Talaria on a live stream. Uh, she has a, a really good substack, VLP888, Knowledge is Power, if you look for Knowledge is Power. And if you search in the UN, she's got a whole um, slew of articles looking at the, the fact that the Russian Federation shouldn't be in the UN and how to expel them from the UN, uh, given that they don't have any justification for actually being in it. They kind of almost stole the position from the USSR rather than any other entity involved in the USSR. The Russian Federation kind of assumed that that it went went to them, their chair, their place, and, and that is highly controversial. Loads of great articles on this topic and those of debunking of claims and evidence, you know, the original letters and whatnot uh, put up there. So really good stuff from Talaria on there. Uh, go and check that out. Right. So here's just an example of the sort of Russian disinformation that has been thrown out there. This is Lord Bebo is a real Russian disinformation uh source but this is this is funny right so my experiment has uh below and above but you seem to just cling on to details and ignore everything else he says not very not making a lot of sense here's a 3d model at scale uh, stuff doesn't match but 
uh, but you can just carry on with your scientific argument, quote, Russia bad, therefore everything is Russia's fault. Uh, don't waste my time anymore. Move along. Post your predictable takes. Anyway, so post this 3D rendering of the missile and the 3D rendering, rendering shows incontrovertibly, indubitably, that it's a Russian missile to which everyone piled on and it was hilarious uh lord bebo no um no report saying stuff the the absurdity and especially the stupidity of this post is really beyond analysis and then it got community noted lord bebo accidentally proved that this was indeed a russian kh 101 the visual match is almost identical except for a slightly different angle uh just yeah real sh real shot in the foot there from this russian uh disinformation source to the point where this is brilliant uh, Alex Kuchov, uh, a Rus pro-Russian here, saying, Stop posting, you F-tard. We don't want you. You're making us look like an effing joke. In other words, Lord Bebo is not doing uh, the Russian disinformation uh, narrative any favours whatsoever. Anyway, we'll go on from that. So one of the, the most prominent disinformers on the on Twitter, for example, given the platform by Elon Musk and who has been uh, involved with a live uh, a, a Twitter, uh, a Twitter spaces or X spaces uh, live chat with Elon Musk. Elon Musk has appeared live with Jackson Hinkle. So Jackson Hinkle has just been over to occupied Donetsk, uh, talking with Russians, hanging out with Russians, uh, and then comes back and consistently spreads disinformation about uh, Russia as an American citizen, and it's disgusting. This man is a disgusting individual. Uh, Fabian Hoffman says here, to emphasise the absurdity of this argument, an AIM-120 and similar interceptor missile will self-destruct mid-air if they miss their targets or lose radar lock. The likelihood of an AIM-120 missing its target, falling to self failing to self-destruct, and then landing precisely on a children's hospital is so minuscule that it isn't worth considering. But this is what Jackson Hinkle is saying. So, Kiev Hospital today was not hit by this, i.e. taking another cruise missile, but not the one that that actually supposedly is, just takes another generic cruise missile. Um, Kiev Hospital today was hit by this and then shows a missile without that very key uh, motor on the back. And that's, of course, going to be insanely important. Now, I just want to remain on Jackson Hinkle for a second here, because if you go and type in Jackson Hinkle and look at what happened after he uh, posted this, that got community noted, right? And the community note was really um, was really on point and and showed that claim to be incorrect. But what happened after that is he uh, manipulated his his uh, his community. So you can see here it says. Um, Ukraine bombing a hospital, blah, blah, blah. This was then community noted. He says, rate this community note as false. This is not a legitimate source and all evidence indicates it was a Ukrainian missile. That got community noted. The community note was incorrect, hence why it's written. So he was manipulating people to the point where uh, on his claim of the missile, uh, the community note was eventually uh, removed because what you have with community notes, in fact, I think he might now... Has he removed? It might have been reported so much that his one has been removed. Interesting. But he's still going on. Ukraine blew up their own children's hospital this morning with an American air defense missile. Uh, but but many of the things he, he places gets community notes. Yet yeah, I reported that. Ah, this is a post I reported. Here it is. Here's one of them uh, saying Ukraine bombed their own hospital, whether it was an accident or on purpose, I'm not sure. Uh, but they are terrorist scum for blaming Russia. So he, but he shows a missile without that. He tried to make the fin look bigger, so it's taking up the engine spot to say that that this is an American missile. Uh, that's not what happened. Uh, uh, here, here is one because I reported it, uh, and he, this had a community note on the bottom. But he got his community, i.e., Russian bots and trolls, to remove the community's uh, note because with community notes you can rate them they are basically done by communities and uh, so I rated that as helpful uh, so that it remains up there and if you get more people to rate it as unhelpful so his 
his community would have done that and then got that community note removed. So therefore, it looks like this is bona fide uh, you know, quality information from Jackson Hinkle, or at least it's not been uh, called into question um, wherever it was. Anyway, let's go back up to uh, some of these. Yeah, here it is. So that one, the community note was removed. Um, but as you can see, some of these claims up here, I mean, just on and on and on, he, he makes false claims. This one here is saying shrapnel from the Ukrainian air defense missile has been found at the scene of the Ukrainian hospital, further proof that Ukraine bombed their own hospital. It's not Russia. And then someone saying that's from June the 23rd, that picture. It's just it's, it lies. They're just outright lies. Um, and he's, he gets, uh, according to uh, question his behavior, especially since the community notes manipulation that he's done here, rate this community note as false, is against um, is against Twitter's rules or X's rules. This uses a line coordinated activity to attempt to misuse and artificially influence the community notes feature is a breach of X rules and can be reported as follows. So you can report that. Um, and I suggest you all go onto Jackson Hinkle's uh, um, uh, threads and look at what he's done and make up your own mind as to what you should do with that but I would look at this because this is definitely uh, not cool and Jackson Hinkle is just spreading outright disinformation but he's protected it appears by Twitter that, that hammers people who are pro-Ukrainian and people who are pro-Russian get to say this stuff manipulate the community to do dodgy things and then gets away with it and isn't called out by uh, Twitter. It's just insanely bad. And then it gets worse. So um, anyway, Pekka Kalyuniemi here says, uh, Twitter or X claim they have guardrails and procedures for manipulation of community notes, yet Hinkle is constantly allowed to meddle with them. He also coordinates engagement uh, campaigns outside of uh, Twitter. Big accounts seem to have different rules than the smaller ones. I, JR, for example, the guy that does my mapping is amazing. He's been banned twice from Twitter and he he comments on Twitter like once in a blue moon, says something that's like not even remotely c controversial at all and gets reported by Russian uh, trolls and gets banned. He's been banned twice for doing basically nothing. And here uh, we have Jackson Hinkle spreading outright disinformation, manipulating the rules and getting away with it. It's absolutely disgusting. Uh, and in, and, D, and so you wonder, well, how is he able to get, get away with it? Well, actually... So we're going to look at the Bellingcat analysis. So Bellingcat is a brilliant open source intelligence uh, um, enterprise that, that actually worked with Navalny. It's done incredible work uh, around the world, really. Uh, Elliot Higgins uh, is is one who has been... Um, he he's basically is Bellingcat, and there are other people that are working with him. He's just absolutely amazing Ben and Cat what, what they've done they found the Sergei, Sergei Skripal murderers who came across from Russia they identified who they were etc uh, etc et they've done an awful lot of stuff Ben and Cat anyway they have just done a debunking of these kind of Jackson Hinkle type claims right a debunking of the Russian narrative and Twitter has now come out and said the links on their site, on on their Twitter, on their tweets, if you like, the links that they use to go back to Bellingcat to say, here's the actual article that we've written concerning this, have been deemed as unsafe, right? Uh, and Elliot Higgins has come out and said, for some reason, Elon Musk's ex is now claiming that the link to this article about Russia bombing a children's hospital is unsafe because apparently it has been identified by X and our partners as being potentially spammy or unsafe. Unsafe by whom? Putin? It's just absolutely outrageous how the truth is having to fight much harder to get out there. And platforms like Twitter with Elon Musk will protect disinformation. It's, it's an absolute freaking disgrace. And Elon Musk is a terrible human being. He is a terrible human being. Like, if you are still a big fan of Elon Musk, honestly, have a look inside here. Have a look at how you're making your evaluations, where you are so deeply entrenched with because what he says on, I don't, I don't know, a woke, anti-woke stuff and being so pro-Republican. If that, if that floats your boat that allows him to do all this other terrible stuff, then you need to be a bit more nuanced. He can do good stuff with like, I don't know, SpaceX or whatever, but still be a terrible human doing, be, doing terrible stuff in, in other places. And, and you need to to ex to allow yourself to accept that if you are someone that is that is someone who thinks that Musk can do no wrong and no one has the right 
to criticize him and those criticisms are just a priori unfounded because you really like him uh, it is very obvious where his uh, sentiments lie with regard to the Ukraine conflict. Now, Tatarugami's done a really good thread. I'm actually going to look at Bellingcat's thread, but I could look at either. Uh, he here's a good image to show you the missiles being claimed, or some of the missiles being claimed by the Russian, uh, the Russians. And then here is the missile that it is, uh, the KH-101, and how they are very different. And it's all about that engine there. Uh, that's what we're going to look at. Anyway, uh, we're going to go to the Bellingcat analysis. Um, Grasnost gone. Just, yeah, not happy here. Pro-Russian Elon Musk continues his disinformation work for Putin. This pathetic man-child has labelled a link to a Bellingcat report as unsafe, a report confirming a Russian missile struck the children's hospital in Kiev, Ukraine. The link is perfectly safe. Um, anyway, Bellingcat, latest an analysis of the open source evidence, as well as multiple missile experts, have pointed to a Russian-launched KH-101 cruise missile being the weapon that struck a children's hospital in in Kiev. Oh look, I've just li li clicked on that and Twitter's telling me it's unsafe. It's not unsafe, it's Bellingcat. Um, the July 8th attack on the Okhmedit, uh Children's Hospital has left three children dead and 16 injured. Way more than that. This was uh, yesterday afternoon. There's, there's a load more than that now. More are thought to be still under the rubble. Yep, that is correct. Shortly after the bombing, claims began to surface on social media that Russia was being wrongly blamed for the attack and that the missile was American in origin, fired by Ukraine. Jackson Hinkle, a political activist uh, who has appeared on Russian state media, was, ha was one such voice. Uh, and there you can see, it. of course, they're blaming Russia again, he says. Uh, Jackson Hinkle, and, uh, and we are blaming Russia because it was them. Uh, Bellingcat analysed social media footage of the attack from different angles, debris left behind among the rubble, and created 3D models of both the art Russian KH-101 cruise mi missile and the US-made AIM-120 for comparison with the missile seen clearly within the footage. This video uh, that first appeared on Telegram clearly shows the missile that hit the hospital. The missile exhibits several characteristics, including the presence of what appears to be a jet engine at its rear, as well as two short wings uh, near the middle of the missile and you can see that there which I have uh, in, um, enlarged there for you so well I've not done that for you but that that's a missile we're looking at um, and then Bellingcat says when placed side by side with 3D models of both the KH-101 and the N-120 the missile clearly shares more characteristics with the KH-101 a cruise missile used exclusively by the Russian armed forces so that is what the original image is. That is a 3D model of what the image shows. And that is a 3D model of a an AIM-120. And yeah, clearly looks like this is the, the actual missile, which is, of course, the KH-101. The AIM-120 has a sharper nose, different fins, and is missing the jet engine on the back in the missile video. When overlaid on the video, the Russian KH-101 model matched the shape of the missile. So there is the uh, the AIM-120, and uh, I think it's, yep, yeah, sort of, it's trying, you can see the engine there, just below it, uh, there's a shadow there of where the engine should be. Uh, and when you overlay this onto the missile, it basically maps perfectly. After the strike, the SBU released three images claiming to show remnants of the ammunition that hit the hospital. They stated that preliminary findings indicated it was a KH-101, which appeared to tally with the aforementioned video footage. So, yes, it's coming from the Ukrainians, but they have uh, uh, given um, indication that, that parts of the missile were these, and they are KH-101. Uh, components. The images appear to be of a support spar and engine panel. The pictures below are of remnants found at the hospital attack compared with the images from the Ukrainian Territorial Defense Forces identification manual showing remnants of a KH-101 strike. Uh, in other words, this looks very much like a KH-101 um, uh, as according to the pieces found. We found the same remnants detailed in the SBU reports and media images from the attack. In other words, it's not just from uh, like the SBU. Other media have shown pieces from the attack that you can that you can also geolocate. So we geolocated the images from UA News website, Gazetto, to just outside the hospital, and they give the coordinates. You can see the remnants below the investigator's arm. 
Um, and so here we have remnants there. That's exactly you know what was found. Um, so in other words, this isn't just kind of an SBU cover up. It can't be that this is this has been geolocated and found uh, contemporaneously. In another SBU image of the remnant of the missile that hit the hospital, you can see markings that include the numbers 84070 and then some other numbers and so on and so forth. Similar markings using this format are on the remnant from the KH-101 allegedly shot down over Ukraine on December the 29th, 2023. In other words, some more evidence to suggest that those components are, all those parts, are parts of a KH-101. Uh, the analysis of open source evidence points to Russian launch KH-101 cruise missile being the weapon that struck the Children's Hospital in Kyiv yesterday. The same conclusion was found by Fabian Hoffman, uh, a doctoral research fellow at the University of Oslo who specialises in missile technology. Uh, so Fabian Hoffman talked about enhanced resolution imagery, uh, once again showing it's a KH-101, highly visible uh, TRDD-50A turbofan engine at the rear section, two relatively long wings, blunted nose. Um, uh, just looking at the, the image there. Dr. Jeffrey Lewis, a nuclear weapons and missile expert at the Middlebury Institute of International Studies at Monterey in California, similarly concluded in an email to Bellingcat that a KH-101 missile could be seen in footage of the attack posted on social media sites. The hospital attack was part of a wider Russian missile barrage that hit civilian targets elsewhere in Ukraine. In total, at least 41 people were killed uh, as Russian missiles fell on several cities aside from Kiev, including Krivyria and Dnipro. According to Ukrainian Air Force, the attack began at approximately 10 a.m local time and involved at least 36 missiles including 13 kh-101 cruise missiles the latest wave of russian attacks against ukraine is among the largest and deadliest in months bellingcat is a non-profit uh, and the ability to carry out our work is dependent on the kind of support the kind support of individual donors and then it appeals for that um let's just see if there is anything else from the tatarigami analysis um Initial visual examination, yep, talks about how the prominent rear section shows it's a KH 101. Uh, and then the large oblong object at the bottom um, rear corresponds to the drop down turbofan engine, a distinctive feature shared by KH 101, 102, and KH 55555 missiles, and completely absent on any air defense missiles which use onboard rocket motors for pro propulsion, right? This is very particular. Uh, in contrast, a comparison with PAC missiles utilized by Patriot uh, air, um, air Defense Systems reveals incongruent wing placement and lacks a distinctive rear-mounted turbojet, further ruling out such systems. Dmitry Polyansky, first deputy permanent representative of Russia to the UN, has spread misinformation claiming that a missile was fired from Nazams. However, facts say otherwise, so let's take a closer look. The AIM-9X has control fins at the rear and stabilizing fins closer to the front. The AIM-120 has control fins at the rear and four fixed wings uh, closer to the center. The asymmetric fin silhouette seen in the video does not match these descriptions. More compellingly, the explosive payload of AIM-120, only 18 kilograms, is insufficient compared to hundreds of kilograms typical of KH-101 missiles. I mean, a simple point of, uh, of that is that none of the air defense missiles could remotely do the damage that was done like empirically done to that hospital the photos are obviously there like you don't even have to have a picture of the missile to know it couldn't have been air defense missiles they are designed to blow up in front of or to hit uh, a um a cruise missile or ballistic missile or whatever and you don't have to do too much damage to blow that up you don't need a massive um payload and in fact the bigger the payload the slower you go and you need a quick missile to intercept a cruise missile or a ballistic missile particularly uh, and so therefore those air defense missiles simply wouldn't be able to do that damage um insufficient compared to the hundreds of kilograms typical of the kh-101 missiles evident in the observed blast radius and damage pattern with burn marks the subsonic kh-101 powered by a distinctive jet engine sounds jet engine sound familiar to experienced observers so i could turn the sound on but you can hear it as well in contrast supersonic missiles like the aim 120 or aim 9 produce different sounds due to their higher velocities and rocket motor propulsion 
uh, despite the explosion's magnitude, recovered missile remnants, including debris and identifiable parts, uh, feature markings visible in photographic evidence released by the SBU. However, conclusive identification of these parts remains challenging. The cumulative evidence, including visual observations, technical characteristics, sound profiles and physical remnants, strongly indicate that the hospital was hit by the KH-101 cruise missile. Um, and they've done a full uh, article on that and prov provided uh, even more evidence too. Uh, in fact, uh, another OSINT has done um, analysis of, uh, I think, trajectories and all sorts uh, going on there. So you can you can look at even more um, information. Yeah, you can see it looks at the speed, um, trajectory, all sorts. So. Yeah, and the, and the sound uh, does a little m bit more in the sound. In summary, contrary to some conspiracy theories, the National Children's Hospital in Kiev was highly likely attacked by an intact RU, Russian uh, KH-101 air-launched cruise missile, uh, controllably descending to its target under its own power. Um, yeah, there you go. Uh, P.S. We have to say that we were very lucky that the missile was travelling almost parallel to the image plane within about... a plus or minus five degrees we estimate which made the math very simple um so they've actually done the math on the the maths on the trajectory and the speed and so you know there is evidence is on the side of well obviously of truth but on the narrative that this was indeed a russian missile and every attempt to disabuse us of this fact is nothing but russian disinformation peddled by either their official sources or their unofficial sources or their absolute wing nuts um useful idiots like jackson hinkle who is just a, a, a grifter for a, a genocidal dictator um now just in in the same context of disinformation the justice department has disrupted a Russian-run AI-enabled Twitter disinformation bot farm. So US Department of Justice, sorry. Uh, almost a thousand accounts on X. Uh, they were masquerading as Americans and promoted Russian uh, government narratives. Uh, this is really good news. The investigation behind this Russian political interference takedown is interesting. First, the FBI got account registration info for a slice of fake accounts on X. They found a lot of email accounts registered on the same server. Uh, so they went to the registrar and while the domain registrar, Namecheap, had a bunch of account registration information for the FBI, uh, the info was a fake name and some alias information. Strikeout? No, the FBI began a sub a subpoena cascade starting with a google account used to register the domain fbi had a tasty fine from first gmail of sub, uh, subpoena moscow ip address that was just the beginning subpoena cascade led through two more emails to a phone number which they say found in a widely leaked russian tax and mobile subscriber information uh, and they got the operator simultaneously a jointly issued technical advisory provided detail on identifying russian ai generated personas likely reflects their conclusion that the russians won't stop uh the russian bot takedown here are some notes sorry the english isn't brilliant foreign efforts to shape americans perceptions via bots continues on twitter despite elon musk's claims ai is now a key disinformation operation tool and the total number of accounts is small versus the twitter universe but doesn't rule out outside impact when well targeted uh, takedowns and accompanying advisories suggest that US and allies are trying various techniques like these disruptions and seizures because the operators are currently beyond their direct reach. Expect the operators to learn, evolve and come right back targeting the US. Russia is one of many countries now swamping Twitter with AI-driven bots to shape perceptions. Even smaller countries' operations flourish uh, and aren't taken down after being uh, identified want proof check the accounts in this campaign for yourself and then looks to another disinformation campaign that they've detailed and russian today's involvement in the alleged uh, bot farm is I, i'm going to report on this a little bit later so there's evidence that R rt's behind it as well yeah so on and so forth anyway i will leave you to go and check that out that is uh, john scott railton with a lot of information on uh, bot farms being uh, outed um, but there it will be a drop in the ocean. Um, 
and then Justin Bronk just adds, if you're wondering, this is a turbojet motor remains from a Russian cruise missile uh, that devastated the Okhmedit Children's Hostel in Kiev. Air defense missiles like these fired by Nazams are rocket powered. They do not feature these turbojet engines, only cruise missiles do. So actually it appears now they've found the turbojet engine. And there you go. Hopefully that was of use to you. Please like, subscribe and share and try not to be sucked in by uh, Russian disinformation as I'm sure you won't be.